You can divide people among a lot of lines, but in the NBA, there's a pretty big division. People who think you take the best player available and people who think you can't teach height. Joel Embiid is a rare talent, a quality big man with the skills to go number one. Footwork, hands, length, shot walk, blocking ability, you name it. But there's another guy named Andrew Wiggins who's also available. And Embiid has some back issues that have bothered him throughout his collegiate career. Word coming out of drafts, combine, pre-workouts is his back looks pretty good. So my question to you guys, I'll start with you, Dan. Does that warrant putting Embiid back in the conversation yeah. number one? Let, let's you go, can't teach height. Let's go back in history a little bit. Sam Bowie. <laughs> Very good one. Sam Bowie, Michael Jordan. Greg Oden. Greg Oden. Kevin Durant. Durant. Who, if you could go back and rewrite history, yes. who would you take? Now, here is the league's chance to rewrite history. I look at these draft boards every day. I cannot believe <laughs> Embiid is, is the consensus number one pick right now. I'm absolutely in shock. I'm not saying he's not going to be a good player. What if player. he's the next Hakeem Olajuwon? He could be the next Hakeem Olajuwon. He could be the next uh, Anthony Davis. I don't know. But to Michael me, Wiggins, you cannot risk what he's going to become. I think you have to well, take Cleveland, Wiggins first. Cleveland's a risk-taking franchise <laughs> when you think about number one picks. <laughs> that's true. So, that's, Meg, your thoughts? I, I agree with Dan in the sense you that... You agree with Dan? Why? If Cleveland was not the number one pick. If Cleveland yes. didn't have the number one pick, I would 100% agree with him. But because Cleveland has the number one pick, I can see them either take... I can see them taking Parker or Embiid over Wiggins because they take those risks. And for whatever reason, the foolishness that goes on in their front <laughs> office, they're they're drinking the Kool-Aid and they don't do what well, is best for them in the long they, run. They just do the hype. They they're new, not going to let you talk. They, if they you have a new G, they have a new GM, so hopefully for them they have some stability in there. I don't know if they that Kyrie Irving was a big risk. At no, the that was a great pick. pick. So la last year, remember, it was Bennett, but there was no consensus number one last year. We didn't really know who the blue chip players were. And, and, and really this year the any. consensus number one is Joel Embiid, and we want them to take Wiggins. Well, it, I think they should take Wiggins. Someone has to be a contrarian on this bet, on this, <laughs> on this couch, and I'm going to say I would take Embiid. If his back, what? If his really? back is healthy, you would healthy, take Embiid? I would take Embiid, especially if, if I know I can get LeBron James. I am taking MB. He's no, not guaranteed. No, but, not but, no, even, LeBron, but that, that if they win, said, but, LeBron's not going back to Cleveland if be, they win. But that being said, I'm still taking him because, like you said, in retrospect, it makes no sense to take Michael Jordan off first. But you took Hakeem Olajuwon because you can't, you can't defend but against no size. Guarantee the real problem with Sam Bowie is too. I'm not saying he's going to be Hakeem Olajuwon, but he he has the potential. There's, there's no guarantee that Wiggins is going to be a superstar either, either, right? You can say that about right. any player kind of the draft. No. Andrew Wiggins is the number one pick in the draft. Don't kill me, Canada. Do not first. kill me, Canada. You are Canadian soil, buddy. Not... <laughs> draft boards agree with you right now. So All right, listen, I would take them. It's first. time for us to talk about uh, another one of my favorite subjects, Andrew Wiggins, the Toronto Raptors, and the Los Angeles Lakers. It's time for us to talk about the Lakers. Now, last week we talked about the fact that they were in the mix for a couple of coaches. Right now the word is former Clipper head coach and current Clipper assistant Alvin Gentry and then the old boss man from Memphis, Lionel Hollins. Who can take over a team that still has Kobe Bryant in place as their franchise player? Who do you prefer? Adrian, I'll start with you since they've dominated the last one. I'm going to say Lionel Hollins, but I'm going to go a little bit outside the box because I think I was reading this morning. You're not interviewing anyone except those two, but who's no, your I heard, I heard I heard Derek Fisher. I heard his oh. name be being swerved on the Knicks. I heard he would be the coach of the Knicks. No, I, I was reading this to the Lakers. I know the Lakers <laughs> want an experienced coach. I heard coach. Phil wants them. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Derek Fisher would be a... a just as good as any other other guys in in LA, mainly because with the Thunder. mainly because the players in the NBA all love him. He knows the, the LA, he knows the Lakers, and he has a great relationship with Russell Westbrook. We all know Russell Westbrook is a free agent in 2015. If you can bring Russell Westbrook, Holy uh, wow, you this is, are tying you, you, a lot yeah, of like, things you're, together. You're the Wizard of Basketball, a UCLA prospect. If you can, uh, UCLA alumni, if you can bring him that onto the Lakers, there. he's he's playing GM for three different Look, teams. If, to if you're yourself. if you're gonna have Derek Fisher coaching the Lakers, you might as well make Kobe the player coach. Because I mean, their their careers what, are, are so who, tied together. Mm -hmm. Who was one, the one of the few players? That was able to tell Kobe like it is and get in his face. Nobody told but that's, Kobe that's, 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 that's as a teammate. He's not going to get that respect as a coach. Jason Kidd got it. But that's all the time. Right. Mark Jackson got it. You but were right. Jason, said Lionel Hall. Jason Kidd yeah, is no. not Lionel, coach Kobe Bryant. Out of those you three, Lionel Hall. I would stay with Lionel Hall. Out of those three, I would stay with Lionel Hall. But 
No, no more bucks on that one. <laughs> Meg, we're going to you this time. I, I, Wait, I, no, the Lakers have the seven pick. He's okay. already butchered the job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're dealing with Derek Fisher as your head coach. You got the seventh pick. Who are you taking? Lakers. Julius Randle. If he's available. If he's available. If, if he drops that much, which I, I personally don't think he will, I think he could go. I think he'll go as high as possibly four, but he'll go top ten. But I think Julius Randle would be good for the Lakers because he can – he. He is very influential, and having Kobe Bryant as that person there can mentor him to be the next big thing okay. out of the draft because you've got he's he's in behind Parker and Bead Wiggins. He could be that sleeper that just I think you're higher on Randall than I am. All right, now here's something else I want to talk about. The Sacramento Kings have made it obvious that uh, they don't necessarily want to keep this pick. They've got a fairly young team. They just drafted Mr. McLemore, and they still got uh, a couple of young bigs in their front court. So they say their eyes are marking Kevin Love and they don't need any guarantee that he resigns, and they're willing to give up the pick, that's going to be a crazy front court. If you have Rudy Gay at the small forward, DeMarcus Cousins at the center, I would assume, and then Kevin Love at the power forward, are you guys feeling? Not enough basketball to go around for those three. So, Not to mention a couple of trigger-happy guards, you know, Isaiah Thomas. Yes. Um, I, I don't understand that, and I also don't understand why anyone would think Kevin Love would want to go to Sacramento for that, it isn't, it for isn't, that one year. It is in California. It's not L.A., it's not man. Showtime. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the Showtime. Yeah. No, no, no one's not buying. La la. This deal goes through. No. Nope. No. no. Kevin, no okay. It Kevin doesn't Love. make any sense for Kevin Love. He might as well stay in Minnesota for another year. Right. If, if he goes, he's drinking the Kool-Aid. Okay. Well, hey, there you have it. Sorry, Kevin. You will not be going to Sacramento. You're stuck <laughs> in Memphis. That's like NBA jail. All right. Still more to come. Have you guys heard what is happening in Memphis? The owners have gone wild. We got to talk about that when we return. And I will, I will challenge Mr. Para to a game of one-on-one -on -one if he really wants it. <laughs> Hang out.